Hello, everyone. Sue Onischuk here, continuing the workbook lessons of A Course in Miracles. And today we're on lesson 295. And the lesson is, the Holy Spirit looks through me today. And it reads, Christ asks that he may use my eyes today and thus redeem the world. He asks this gift that he may offer peace of mind to me and take away all terror and all pain. And as they are removed from me, the dreams that seem to settle on the world are gone. Redemption must be won. As I am saved, the world is saved with me. For all of us must be redeemed together. Fear appears in many different ways or different forms. But love is one. And the prayer today is, my father, Christ has asked a gift of me. And when I give, that it be given me. Help me to use the eyes of Christ today. And thus, allow the Holy Spirit's love to bless all things that I may look upon, that his forgiving love may rest on me. The Holy Spirit looks through me today. So it starts off by saying again, that Christ asked that he see that he may use my eyes today. And I'm reminded of, again, to remember to practice saying that Christ in me sees or calls forth the love and the Christ in you. When I stand in that, when I truly practice that, then in the, in the undoing process of the ego, you know, I am letting anything other than that go to, and giving it over to the Holy Spirit. As I release other than Christ's vision, which is all based in love, when I release anything that is based in fear, that is driving me, I'll say, all based, again, as I said, in fear, it's really to look at what is, what is the cause of the effect that you're experiencing in your life? Is it a cause? Is the cause and the effect related to fear or related to love? And if we're really truly honest with ourselves, we don't, we're not looking at, not open to see the fear that is driving it. And that's what we're doing as we continue to practice the course, is to go to that level. There are levels here in the course. And is when that fear is let go of when we give it over. It's not real. That now the door is open to experience the love, to experience the love within ourselves and the experience the love within our brothers and sisters. So I want to read today from the text. And it is in chapter 11. And the section is uh, section eight. And it's titled, The Problem and the Answer. And it starts off in the first paragraph by saying, this is a very simple course. And going down into the fourth paragraph, it says, no one can withhold truth except from himself. Yet God will not refuse you the answer he gave. 
The answer he gave is always in front of us. It is us that have put up the blocks. And in that, we put in up the filters. We cannot see the answer that is already there. And the answer here in, in this uh, reading of the text is, is with a capital A. It says then, ask then for what is yours, but which you did not make. Is what you did not make with this ego identity. And do not defend yourself against truth. We defend an attack. When we defend an attack, it's because we are not living in truth. We lack the knowledge and the experience of what is true, and truth is love. And so you made the problem, God has answered. Ask yourself, therefore, but one simple question. It reads, do I want the problem or do I want the answer? You know, what I'm present to in reading that is how much do I or do you or do we dwell in problems? Again, which is blocking us from seeing the answer. So it's a decide for the answer and you will have it. And you will see it in see it as it is and it is yours already now i haven't got my finger on it in the moment but it there is a line in the course which says ask and it is given so it says you may complain that this course is not sufficiently specific for you to understand and to use yet perhaps you have not done what is specifically what it specifically advocates Again, we need to take on the practices and experience these practices in order to truly, again, understand the use of these practices. He said, this is not a course in the play of ideas, again, but in, in their practical application, which, what I, which I was just inferring. We need to practice the principles and the lessons in this course. Nothing could be more specific than to be told that if you ask, again, you will receive. The Holy Spirit will answer every specific problem as long as you believe that problems are specific. The Holy Spirit's answer is both many and one, as long as you believe that the one is many. You may be afraid of his specificity for fear of what you think it will demand of you. His specificity for fear of what you think it will demand of you. I, I just said that, okay. Yet only by asking will you learn that nothing of God demands anything of you. Again, over and over again, it, it reminds us in the Course, we need only to give over our triggers, our fears, our judgments, our desire or need to attack, our self-betrayal, our blame. We need to only give it over to the Holy Spirit. Let it go. That's all. There's nothing more to do. Nothing more to do. When that's gone, all we are now standing in is now. And what's available then is the love of God. The answer with a, a capital A. You know, as I'm looking at this screen, you know, we can be possibly seeing, see the background here. We can possibly be seeing a lot of clouds and all of it, this beautiful scene behind us, clouded over. And, you know, behind the clouds is this beautiful, beautiful gift of nature. And also behind the clouds always is the sun. 
So the Holy Spirit, as we let go of the clouds, the clouds, we're letting them go. We're removing them. And then what is available is the beauty. What is available is the abundance. What is available is the infinite possibilities. And here's the part about it. We live in the insanity of the ego in all of this the infinite possibilities are available to us. It's beyond measure. It's beyond anything we could conceive of in this human mind. So again, it says, yet only by asking will you learn that nothing of God demands anything of you. God gives, he does not take. When you refuse to ask, it is because you believe that asking is taking rather than sharing. So, you know, I, I don't know if I can, I will do my best here to share this. It's an awareness that came to me the other day that, you know, look in the dream world and there's certain things in the dream world that I question and wonder why is it not present for me? And that there, I recognize there's a sense within me, some level that things are being taken away from me. You know, you can use money, for example. It's one of the most difficult things to deal with in this human condition that you may, I may have money. And then every time I turn around, it is, as I saw, was being taken from me. Having to pay the bills, pay the rent, pay the mortgage, pay whatever. Now, I'm hoping this is making sense to you at this point. It says here, God gives. He does not take away. What I got to see is I'm not focusing at all on what is being given. What is already there now? So my fear or my stance that things are being taken from me is like the clouds. They're the clouds. If I focus on those clouds, then I can't see the beautiful scenery behind me. I can't see the gifts that have already been given me. And it's beyond measure. So I invite you to take a look in your own life to see again, this is what this is all about. Where are you, you know, holding the identity that you've created, all the beliefs you've created that are all ego-based that again are blocking you. We are undoing that. It was a great insight for me to see that. So now it is for me to practice to recognize when I am in that space of thing is thinking that or feeling I've been things are being taken from me to let that go and give it to the Holy Spirit. And then to be open to what is already available. And that's what we're being, you know, it's being addressed here in, in this, you know, the problem and the answer. And it goes on here to say the Holy Spirit will give you only what is yours and will take nothing in return. And let's remember as well in the course that, the, you know, God doesn't fix the illusion. The illusion's not real. If you keep looking and asking for something in the illusion to be fixed, it's not, that's not what the Holy Spirit does. It's not what God does. This is all about the, you know, changing of our minds. It's a mind training. So am I going to continue to hold in my mind what is being taken from me? Or am I going to choose to be in my God mind and recognize everything that is already here now? The gifts that are present now within me. This is inward work. All right, I'll leave it at that. I'm going to go on here. The Holy Spirit will give you only what is yours and will take nothing in return. For what is yours is everything and you share it with God. 
What is yours is everything. And you share it with God. The ego seeks to get. It's nothing. With God, there is everything. That is the reality. It says, would the Holy Spirit who wills only to resolve be capable of misinterpreting the question that you asked to learn his answer, the Holy Spirit's answer? Remember, the Holy Spirit is the bridge, is the bridge from fear to love. The bridge from the ego to, to God. So you have heard the answer, but you have misunderstood the question. You believe that to ask for guidance of the Holy Spirit is to ask for deprivation. He goes on to say, little child of God, you do not understand your father. You believe in the world that takes. See, you didn't realize uh, putting that together. That that was an insight that I gained the other day. Now it is to stay present to where am I living in that the world is taking from me. Again, this is all a process. And when you're open and willing, you will be shown. You will, you know, again, it takes accountability and radical honesty to do this course. So do, do not deny it to yourself for you. It can only free you. Nothing of God will enslave his son whom he created free. We were created free and whose freedom is protected by his being. Blessed are you who are willing to ask the truth of God without fear, for only thus can you learn that his answer is the release from fear. Beautiful child of God, you are asking only for what I promised you. He said, do you believe? God says, do you believe that I would deceive you? The kingdom of heaven is within you. That is what we are getting in touch with. It's all within. This is all inner work. As we heal within, we will see it without. Believe that the truth is in me, for I know that it is in you. God's sons have nothing. They do not share. Ask for truth of any son of God, and you will be asked, and you have asked it of me. Not one of us, but has the answer in him to give to anyone who asks it of him ask anything of god's son and his father will answer you for christ is not deceived in his father and his son is not deceived in him do not then be deceived in your brother and see see only his loving thoughts as his reality for by denying that his mind is split you will heal yours if you're seeing that your brother has a split mind, it's only reflecting that you have. We're not, and again, you're not, we are not seeing the Christ in our brother, only the Christ in our brother. Accept him as his father accepted him and heal him onto Christ, for Christ is his healing and yours. Christ is the Son of God, who is in no way separate from his father, whose every thought is as loving as the thought of his father by which he was created. Be not deceived in God's son, for thereby you must be deceived in yourself. And being deceived in yourself, you are deceived in your father, in whom no deceit is possible. In the real world, there is no sickness, for there is no separation and no division. Only loving thoughts are recognized, and because no one is without your help, the help of God goes with you everywhere. As you become willing to accept his help by asking for it, we need to ask for it. You will give it because you want it. Nothing will be beyond your healing power because nothing will be denied your simple request. What problems will not disappear in the presence of God's answer? Ask then to learn of the reality of your brother, because that is what you will perceive in him and you will see your beauty reflected in his. 
the Christ in me calls forth the Christ in you. The Christ in me loves and honors the Christ in you. I'm adding that in this section. Do not accept your brother's variable perception of himself for his split mind is yours and you will not accept your healing without his. For you share the real world as you share heaven and his healing is yours. To love yourself is to heal yourself. And that is what we're doing as we practice this course day by day and to the best of our ability, moment by moment. To love yourself again is to heal yourself and you cannot perceive part of you as sick and achieve your goal. Brother, we heal together as we live together and love together. Be not deceived in God's son for he is one with himself and one with his father. Love him who is beloved of his father and you will learn of the father's love for you. Now that's a reading from the, again, from chapter 11 and uh, which is God or the ego. And it's from section seven, I'm sorry, section eight, the problem and the answer. And you might want to read the rest of that section, but I wanted to read that part today and to share it with you and to reflect on it. And again, our lesson today is the Holy Spirit looks through you today. The Christ in me loves and honors the Christ in you. The Christ in me calls forth the Christ in you. All right. That is our lesson for today. Thank you, as always, for being here. And um, please go below, as always, like, comment, share. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. For those of you also who are donating, I appreciate it. Appreciate all donations that are now and forthcoming. Go below here and the YouTube channel under the description and um, click on more and you will see how to proceed with donations. All right, I look forward to being with you in the next video for lesson 296. And uh, in the meantime, from my heart to yours, I extend much love to you. Bye for now.